What is going on everybody? Today we're looking at some Hasbro G.I. Joe classified exclusive figures. So first off we have these three which I believe were from a Walmart con and in this we got Shooter, the Crimson Alley Viper, and the Mole Rat. So all three of those look really cool. As I said I believe these were part of the latest Walmart con so they're all Walmart exclusive and I think they all look pretty cool. Of course we're getting another Crimson figure so an Alley Viper this time which I do like the Alley Vipers just with the Crimson you know I'm tired of getting the same characters over and over again but filling out more of those Crimson ranks which is cool just getting bored of those. But Shooter looks really nice. So just a female sniper that looks pretty nice has some cool like head switching out pieces and then the mole rat looks pretty cool as well with his different accessories and kind of getting some of the story with that but then we're also going to throw in the target exclusive viper from python patrol we haven't really got any of the other figures yet so we're just going to throw her in with this as well as a part of this exclusive way so she looks pretty cool just a female ninja a part of python patrol so has the red black and yellow color design to her as well that looks pretty cool overall so we're going to throw her in this grouping as well so let me go and get these out of the box and we'll take a look at them together. So we're going to start off with Shooter, whose real name is Jody Craig, and she's the Joe Team Sharpshooter with vast knowledge of bullet drop and wind deflection that will spend days motionless waiting for her target. So she looks cool here, and she's a part of Night Force, so she's in a lot darker colors, you know, to be out and about at night. And overall, I think looks pretty good here. Has pretty nice, like, face design stuff, you know, it does look like female, and has the hair that we can switch out and replace with stuff. And I always think it looks good, like it doesn't sit on perfectly, especially around the ears, but it always doesn't, like, like from the front, it looks perfect good so no issues with that or anything so I like how they have the hairs that you can switch out they have different designs so this one she just has their hair pulled back with a little like ponytail there but overall looks pretty decent and then we got her outfit with a shirt on that's like mostly a black could be like a really dark gray or whatever it is so you can see around her neck on the shoulders and in the midsection with a nice vest on top here so we have a sheath for a knife and a little device here probably for like the wind or distance or something like that to do with sniping she has that there and it continues around to the back then we get a bell around her waist with some pockets and then some black pants going all the way down with some thigh guards so some pads there on her thighs with the holster on one side all the way down to her weird looking boots so these just look weird and awkward I think they're fun looking but like I said weird at the same time and then she just does have some gloves there on her hands and a nice like snake tattoo with an arrow going through it there on her left arm so overall I think she does look pretty cool but for movements we get the head that'll twist all the way around and it'll look down that far and up that far so just a little bit of movement there in the head the shoulders do come up to 90 with the butterfly joint back and forth that'll rotate all the way around then we do get a bicep twist and the double elbow joint which these elbow joints are pretty stiff on her and I think we've had to like cut out some there's just like way too material to allow the elbows to bend so we had to cut some out but once you do it can bend up that far and then the wrist will also twist all the way around and hinge up and down for this hand then we get the ab crunch which I don't really think there's too much you can see the separation there like it just moves a little back and forth and pretty much no twisting but then you do get the crunch and twist all the way around at the waist then we get the hips that can come up to 90 and out to the side. Of course, those drop down hips got to push back. Thigh twist all the way around and the double knee joint that'll bend up that far to the back. So not too bad. Close to kicking her butt with a shin twist there just in the middle of the legs. You have to find it. And then the foot will flex back and forth and twist side to side. So overall, she's pretty decent. No major issues like I said, except the elbows where we did have to cut out some material. So if you want to get more range, you will have to cut some out there. And then the only issue is I do have a lot of issues getting her to stand. Like she just wants to keep rocking back and forth I don't know if it's these shoes because they do you know kind of have a little curve to them so I don't know if it's just those that's causing all the issues but yeah she doesn't stand up the easiest but she does come with a number of accessories so as I mentioned she does have hair pieces we can switch out so we get an additional hair that's got like a braid down the top of it there so that's pretty cool and you just take and pull the hair off in there you can see what they look like without it and then place this hair piece on and I think that looks pretty decent as well you know sits on there real nice and nice looking haircut design there for her as well and then we also get a hair piece with a gas mask attached to it so that looks pretty fun with like the gas mask design on there and then it's the hair from that first piece as well so we can just take and slide this on and so there now she has the gas mask as well which I think fits pretty well with like with the colors and stuff fits in with the outfit design so I do like that a lot I just don't know how well it would work for sniping with having a gas mask on but like I said I do like that design and then we get some weapon accessories so first we have a knife so a knife we've seen like multiple times before I forget what it's called but a nice knife oh it's just all in a basic gray color all the weapons will be but we can take and just slide this into the sheath here on her chest so it just sticks right up in there and she also gets a pistol so nice pistol again all in that gray looks more futuristic with the design maybe a little laser sight down there on the bottom but looks pretty good overall and this will stick into the thigh holster so a little bit hard to get in there the thigh holster was a little squeezed together so I had to get it open enough to get the gun in but it sits in there real nice and then we get her main weapon of her sniper rifle which looks pretty cool again in a basic gray so I wish it had more details but it looks pretty nice with 
the stock, the big scope up top, and then has the long barrel with probably like a silencer or whatever there on the end. So it looks pretty crazy. It does also come with a magazine that we can take and slide into it. So it kind of fits in here at an angle, slides right in there. So there we have that gun that we can try and give to her. But before we do, it does also come with this piece you can stick into her back. So it just goes into like the back peg. You can slide this in and then you can put the gun in. So this goes right into the trigger hole. So you just get it lined up to fit in there and then there's a little hook that kind of holds onto it. So you can get that the store into her back and with it being in that hole, you can sort of twist it there however you want. So that's pretty fun too that it's got a nice holder there that'll keep it on her back. But let's try and put this in her hands. So there I got the sniper rifle in her hands. Of course I can't ever get them really posed up to actually look like they're sniping or anything. But I think overall she looks pretty cool there. I love the different hair options that we can switch out. I'll probably just switch it so you can see her face. So probably one of those other hair designs. But I like I said I do really like the gas mask because I think it fits in really well with her outfit design stuff. So it just fits in really nice. But like I said probably not conducive for sniping. But overall I like the design. I just wish I didn't have as many issues getting her to stand. She just rocks back and forth so much and especially with the sniper now she just wants to fall forward all the time. But I think she looks really nice just needs to be fixed with the feet design. And next up we've got the Crimson Alley Vipers which are Cobra's equivalent of the SWAT team that spearhead Cobra's inner city invasion forces, masters of brutality and ruthlessness They use forms of treachery to achieve objectives. And obviously we've had the Alley Vipers before but this is just the Crimson version so it's going to have the mostly all red. I like the Alley Vipers before so having in red you know just boring again with another Crimson color with a red character but I like that design so seeing it different will be cool as well. But overall it looks pretty nice so we have the face mask so you can just see some of the face of the person underneath with like a mask over top and then this red helmet on there with the red cobra logo and i love the like little snake fangs and stuff and has the piece out to the side to put the mask on him and he's mostly in on an all black suit so down the neck and down the arms and then down the legs as well all in black with this red vest over the top again looks just like the other one just painted red this time with like a sheath hold design all sorts of pockets around there and then we do have some different like guards there on the arms so we do have the cobra logo and then some forearm guards and i love how they have the black and white striping that sort of matches there on the leg as well so and those little details is pretty cool. A thigh holster on one side and just like a pad probably the hold stuff on the other. Some knee pads, some shin guards all the way down to the boots there. Now this does seem like the older designs. They just probably took that other Alley Viper and repainted it up. So I feel the movements are a little bit older by now and don't work as nice as some of the newer figures. So that's a bit of an issue. But overall hopefully it's just a good figure. So let's do the movements with the head that'll twist all the way around. It looked like the neck sort of twisted there too. We can look down that far and up that far and it did look like it maybe had like a hinge in there or something. But relatively decent movements there the shoulders do come up pretty close to 90 it looks like I forced it there a little bit and can butterfly back and forth and twist all the way around we do get a bicep twist just above this band here and the double elbow joint that bends up that far which isn't bad wrist will twist around and hinge back and forth for this hand and we do have a crunch and twist but with the vest it's hard to know but crunch back and forth a little bit and can twist around as well then we get the hips that can come up to 90 and out to the side has the drop down hips so it goes really far in there pretty loose so he's going to wobble back and forth real easily but we can push it back up there just to try to help at least and then we get the thigh twist that'll twist around and the double knee joint that bends up that far to the back very close to kicking his butt a shin twist there at the top of the boot and the foot will flex back and forth and twist side to side. So one thing that annoys me about it is that his shin guards are always to the side, which is kind of annoying. I wish they would just sit straight on, but they're always there off to the side, which is annoying. And then these drop down hips, like I said, make them very loose and wobbly in the hip section. So just have to deal with that. But of course with these, they come with a lot of accessories. So we'll just start with the head and we get the additional mask piece. So we have the mask there in red this time that we can take and just slide on the side of the head. So there you've got the face guard now, which you can obviously fold up and see the face and stuff. And I like how it does have have some design inside of the helmet kind of like a targeting system which is pretty cool so you can have that on him then starting with weapons we do get two knives so two identical knives that can go into like the sheath here on his chest so you can store one there and then there is a sheath here on his wrist as well so we can slide this in and it be stored there so he's got access to both of those knives he also comes with a pistol so again a futuristic thick black pistol but looks pretty cool overall and we can stick this into the thigh holster here and just slides in he also comes with a backpack so this big Big backpack which every time I see this I think it's the Ghostbusters backpack but it looks decent with the Cobra logo it has like some grenades and pockets and stuff going on in there so we can obviously take and put this into his back and it just slides on right there and I'll go ahead and put it on here but he does come with the gun with the grappling hook so if they need to grapple or something I don't know it kind of looks like a shotgun or just some weird design but it has a long scope
rope on top and just don't know what it's for, but it comes with this grappling hook. So I assume it's just a gun to shoot a grapple if they need to repel buildings or anything, but we can take and just store this on the backpack. So it's got a little circle there that fits into the trigger guard and just holds it on there. So he's always got the grappling hook there on his back ready in case he needs it. Then he has two main guns. So first we get an SMG. So loaded out SMG with a gray a scope and has a removable magazine there that we can clip in. So it looks pretty cool overall, but a nice small gun, which I may give this to him. So to get it in his hand, you kind of have to put it into his left hand, which he does have the hinge up and down in the left. So it would make him like left hand dominant. But because of this gun, specifically the magazines on the right side here, you have to kind of put it in the left or it won't fit in because I tried putting it in the right and it wouldn't fit in there. So you have that option. And then you do also have an assault rifle here, which has a nice thick design with the same magazine that we can take out a little scope up top. Now this we can put into his right. So there he's got the two gun option with both guns there in his hands. But of course with the Alley Viper, since they're like the SWAT team, he comes with a shield as well, which I love this from the first one, but this time all in red. So we have the Cobra logo there in black. And again, that caution design on it looks cool. And again, on the back here, we have kind of like a targeting system or it just shows different stats. And of course the grip's there to put it on his arm. So that'd be pretty cool. Let's see if I can get this on him. So there I gave him the shield and I did have to slide that sheath for the knife off the arm too to get it on there. So he's got that. So you can do that option to make him left-handed or we could just put it on the left arm kind of like you normally do with right-handed people. But either way, you just have the different options. I think I just went with this because he's got the gun hand for that and I want the smaller gun in him. But overall, I think that looks cool. And of course, comparison, we have the normal Alley Viper. So here they are in the orange and blue, which like I said, I do really like this a lot. Love this design. All the orange and blue everywhere is really cool. But having them in the all red for the crimson is pretty awesome as well. Well, and now we can add him in with the rest of our Crimson team. So there's our Alley Viper with the bat, Crimson Guard, and Crimson Viper. So all look pretty cool, part of the Crimson all in red there. And of course we can add him in with that new Crimson Strike team we got. But as I always say, it's boring just to get the same characters over and over again, just in red this time. But he looks cool, I like this design, but I think for me I just prefer the other Alley Viper more. And next up we have the Mole Rats, which are Cobra's mining force used to gather resources to fuel Cobra's operations. Many are washouts from training used to get some benefits out of them and others are being punished. But they are equipped with full body hazard suits and breathing systems, but has limited protection against the toxic energies that they often excavate. And in this specific case, some of the Dark Energon has turned them into mindless husks. So they're almost like zombie figures, which you can kind of see up with the head there. But overall, I think they look cool, obviously, like just ignoring the head where they have the hazard suit so you can see the orange coming down and sort of going through the body with the orange and blue design the orange and dark blue which looks cool and then of course has all the breathing stuff and with the extra accessories we'll definitely get some of that we have a little like control pad there on his chest all sorts of pockets and again that orange and blue design running all through it and then going down the legs with the blue hazard suit all the way down to the orange where it's sort of tightened there around the black boots you know to keep all the toxins out as best as it can and then the little cobra logo there and silver on the right shoulder so overall i think looks pretty cool and then like i said this one specifically is more like the zombie version so the face is all white it's got some of this like purple stuff growing it almost looks like little crystals or it could be like bubbling and stuff with all white eyes and the teeth looking all nasty so it's definitely been like zombified by the inner john which is a part of their new thing they're doing like i think tying in with transformers with inner john but this is the dark inner john stuff so pretty cool it's got that connection but i think this just looks pretty creepy but for movements, we get the head that'll twist all the way around. Look down the far and up the far. Of course, it does have this color from the hazmat suit limits that range. And then we get the shoulders that come up to 90 with a very little butterfly joint, pretty much nothing there, and rotates around. We get a bicep twist and the double elbow joint, which feels really stiff, but you can get it at the bend of that far, so pretty decent. And the wrist will twist around and hinge up and down for this hand. Then for the ab crunch, we do have a crunch right in there, crunch back and forth and twist around a little. And then we should at the waist crunch back and forth and twist around a little. Then we go down to the hips that come up to 90 and out to the side again with those drop down hips can do the splits and you gotta push it back up. Thigh twist around, the double knee joint that bends up that far to the back, not far from kicking the butt. Shin twist there just above the orange and then the foot flexes back and forth and twist side to side. So pretty decent movements overall, a little bit of stiffness in the elbows as I showed, but everywhere else he works out pretty good. And this does seem like the newer body. So unlike that alley viper where I had a lot of issues with looseness, he's mostly tight everywhere and doesn't really cause any problems. But with him, we do get a number of accessories. So first we get accessories with the breathing system. So first we get a mask that's covered up there. So it has this breathing mask on. So probably preceding him turning into this, he had this mask on. So we'll switch out for this. 
So there he's got the breathing mask on, which looks pretty decent. I love how it's got a little bit of like a purplish red sort of tint there to the eyes. So that looks nice. We do also get a backpack piece. So a backpack, you know, it's going to have all the breathers and stuff like that. It looks like little fans on the back there. And tubing that will come up and connect into the mask here on the side. So we got to get this in the back and connect the tube. So you can connect it up like that. So you can get the backpack on and then connect that tube, which of course it is kind of hard to get the tube. It's got to sit right in where with that. And then it limits the range of the head, which doesn't really matter too much but that is one flaw and then we do also get an additional breathing tube here that we connect onto the chest and goes into the front of the mouth and it connects right in there so again on this little piece sticking out on his chest right into the front of the mask so again that's probably where the reader is to read how much oxygen and everything but I love how it's a system that all sort of feeds in together there which is cool and then we start to get more fun accessories. So first we have a canister that's probably got some dark energy on in it. So it's got sort of this like purplish red color. And I do think it's a thing like if you hold it up to light and then like turn the lights off, it's kind of like a glow in the dark type thing. It sort of glows, which is pretty cool, but a nice little canister there. Obviously we can put this into his hand, but it does also look like he's got a little piece here on his backpack that you can actually take and sort of slide that in there. So it'll hold it off there on the back of him. So that, you know, allows to free up his hands. We do also get what's called a scanner, but it kind of looks like a Geiger counter. So probably Probably just the thing to test around to make sure they're not getting into anything too toxic but we got this that we can put into his hand so we can be scanning around with that and then we do also get his main weapon which kind of has a cool function to it so we get the main piece here that's called a power drill at least that's what I think it's called so it looks pretty cool it's just you know sort of base thing we have like the hand grip all the way back here but it comes with additional pieces we can add on so since it's called a drill trigger we do get a drill bit piece that we can take and just slide on the end of it so you just gotta pop it on there so there it gives you a little handle there in the front with a drill on the end so we can give this to him you know to be drilling out the energon or it comes with a gun option as well that we can put on so it'll turn it pretty much into a gun as well so there it's got like a gun design to it so that is pretty cool i think the drill is more unique so i'll probably put that on but just cool that we get the options so there i gave him the drill gun obviously i could take the scanner out and put that in his hand as well but i'll just leave it like this for now so overall pretty cool to have this i do really like this design it's you know pretty fun with the additional head to make it look more zombified but also having all like the tube connections there and to the mask and then the fun accessories as well this is a pretty fun character and i really like this overall and our final character today is Viper, whose real name is Anne A. Conda. So pretty fun name there. And this specific version is her a part of the Python Patrol. Now she's a martial artist specialized in intelligence and a mercenary, but she was brought on by Cobra Commander after sneaking into his private business meeting and offered her services. So obviously I don't know much more about this figure than that. I couldn't really find anything else beyond that. But I think she looks pretty cool. I'll show you like outfit-wise. She does look very similar to the blue ninjas we've already had, the female version, but it's pretty cool here. Again, in the Python Patrol color show she's got a lot of the red and yellow designs of course with a lot of black as well but overall a pretty nice looking like ninja character but we can see with design there around her face so we can see she does have the eyes there and I like how she has like the eyelashes off to the side with this mask covering her and the little cobra logo there on her forehead so that's pretty nice with that red band around there when they all black and then going into like the ninja gi outfit so she has the gi in the center and love all the like texture details and everything running through there again with the Python Patrol design with the yellow zigzags running across there and she has some guards there on our shoulders and going down the arms with like an elbow pad again in the red and yellow design we red belt around the waist going down to the black baggy pants there uh, that are baggy until you get to the knee and then tight going all the way down to the feet where she does have the toe shoes on so overall looks relatively cool but as i said it's pretty much just reuse of that blue ninja but movement wise we get the head up twist all the way around of course the neck is twisting in there but it can look down that far and up that far so we do have the hinge joint feels like it's pretty stiff but there is the hinge so should have better range than normal then the shoulders do also come up of course we have these shoulder pads we got to worry about that can get up pretty close to 90 with the butterfly joint back and forth and it'll twist all the way around then we get a bicep twist and the double elbow joints that can bend all the way up that far so almost all the way up on itself with the wrist that'll twist around and this one specifically has a hinge up and down then we go to the ab crunch so with the cut out there they'll crunch back and forth and twist all the way around and not sure if she has yeah it feels like she may crunch at the waist and twist around there as well then we go down to the hips that come up to 90 and out to the side thigh twist all the way around the double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back pretty much kicking her butt a shin twist at the top of her boot and then the foot will flex back and forth and twist side to side so she has good movements all around and no major issues then we get her accessories and we've had a lot of these same accessories before but one thing that's different she comes with the skull mask which looks pretty cool with a nice like red eye on top of it there looks pretty crazy but we can take and slide this on our head so she has that skull option which i think looks a little bit weird and awkward and it looks almost too big for her head so not exactly 
exactly sure what's going on there with that, but it does look a little funny. Then we do also get a back piece. So we get this back piece in all gray. It does have the Arashikage logo in there. I don't know if she's a part of it. I didn't see anything about that in her story, but this could be just because it's reused from the other figure. So not sure, but then it has the nice arrows there with the gold tips on them. So that looks pretty cool. We'll just take and stick this into her back. So it just pegs right in there. And then for weapons, first we get a bow. So a bow to go along with the arrows. So a nice like compound bow all in red here. And because she can't hold it in the arrows, I'll just go and store this onto her back. And so it has the little piece here that we can take and slide onto the bow to be able to also store that onto her back. And then she comes with some swords as well. So she comes with a katana and then a wakazashi. So the shorter sword there. And obviously with this, we do have the slots here on her back that we can store these into. So we can store, just store all the weapons there on her back. But let's go and just put the swords in her hand. So there I got the swords in her hands and since she does look so familiar, you know, not really anything new to her. She is pretty boring. Like I think the skull mass adds some to it, but like I said, it just looks way too big on her. It's like way too big of a skull, but still overall she looks pretty cool. And as I mentioned, she is just a replica of the blue ninja. So here we've got the blue ninja. So like I said, it's going to be pretty much, except for the arms, going to be exact same body wise and everything just obviously repainted in the new Python patrol colors. But overall, I think she looks relatively decent and a cool looking figure. Well, that's going to be it for this G.I. Joe Classified Series exclusive figures with our Walmart Con exclusives of Shooter, the Crimson Alley Viper, and the Mole Rat, and then the Target exclusive Python Patrol Viper. All four are pretty cool. I really like Shooter, and the Mole Rat is probably my favorite out of all of them. The Alley Viper is cool as well, like I said, just stinks because we've already had him before. The body is not new or updated or anything, so I have some issues with him, but overall, I love the, like, red design. I think it looks cool for that. And then Viper is just okay. Like, I don't hate her, but she's not, like, the most exciting thing, like I said, because of having that blue ninja, you know, it's relatively exactly the same just in different colors so overall the figures aren't bad it's just obviously if you want to have different characters but i could highly recommend the shooter and the mole rat for sure but let me know what you thought of these four down in the comments if you enjoyed this review let me know with a thumbs up but i want to thank you all for watching i hope you all stay awesome out there and i'll see you in our next review